Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Aspen Evolution 1000 PFD included in Pal V Liberty. Also, Mission Aviation Fellowship begins COVID-19 vaccine delivery and EAA B-17 recovering swiftly from a recent bird strike. Happy Friday, everybody. You survived the work week. We have a great show for you ahead of the weekend. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Aspen Avionics reports that the Evolution 1000 primary flight display has been selected by manufacturers of the PAL-V, the first flying car. After being the first flying car to get road permission for Europe, PAL-V is now also reportedly the first to finalize the full certification basis with EASA. Based on PAL-V's 10-year of test results, EASA specialist teams finalized the requirements for the PAL-V Liberty, including the installation of the Aspen Evolution 1000 PFD. We designed the Evolution product display over 15 years ago to be the most flexible and affordable electronic flight instrument system in the general aviation marketplace. With over 20,000 displays installed worldwide, we never imagined that an Aspen primary flight display would be among those installations in the first commercial flying car, said Corey Relling, International Regional Sales Manager of Aspen Avionics. He goes on to say Aspen Avionics has been a trusted partner in the development of the PAL-V Liberty flying car. Over the 10-year journey of design and flight testing, we were determined to install systems that have a proven track record with equipment that is easy to operate and companies that share our determination of safety as a key factor in PAL-V's development. Aspen Avionics checked all the boxes, said Jerome Van der Brack, supply chain manager at PAL-V. Coming up after the break, Mission Aviation Fellowship begins COVID-19 vaccine delivery. Details after these messages. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Errol Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Normally, around this time, we'd be putting together our annual April 1st edition, but we are not doing that this year. April 1st edition will take a hiatus this year, out of respect for all of those who suffered. And yes, normalcy is starting to appear in little bits and pieces. The fly-in season seems to be ready to start anew and aero business are preparing to rally back to strength. And when that process is done, we promise you we'll have the funniest April 1st edition you've ever seen. NASA Ingenuity Mars helicopter readies for flight. NASA is targeting no earlier than April 8th for the Ingenuity Mars helicopter to make the first attempt at power, controlled flight of an aircraft on another planet. Before the four pound rotorcraft can attempt its first flight, however, both it and its team must meet a series of daunting milestones. Ingenuity remains attached to the belly of NASA's Perseverance rover, which touched down on Mars on February 18th. Then, on March 21st, the rover deployed the guitar case-shaped graphite composite debris shield that protected Ingenuity during landing. Columbia Helicopters unveils multi-mission helicopter program. 
Columbia Helicopters has unveiled a multi-mission helicopter program featuring a Columbia Model 234 Chinook heavy lift helicopter. The multi-mission helicopter program uses Columbia's Model 234 multi-mission Chinook helicopter and Columbia's turnkey operational training and, and life cycle sustainment support. It features the largest internal cabin of any helicopter capable of lifting external loads up to 25,000 pounds and a suite of customizations designed to reconfigure the aircraft between mission requirements. Texas Aviation Hall of Fame induction goes virtual. The Lone Star Flight Museum is inducting four new members into the Texas Aviation Hall of Fame. George W.S. Abbey, Colonel, Eileen M. Collins, Usto Schultz, and Tyson Weiss. They invite you to join them on Thursday, May 6th for the virtual induction ceremony. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. Mission Aviation Fellowship begins COVID-19 vaccine delivery. Mission Aviation Fellowship is delivering COVID-19 vaccines in the landlocked country of Lesotho to help combat the spread of the deadly virus. Lesotho's mountainous terrain makes interior land travel difficult and MAF is acting as the last leg carrier to ensure the vaccines stay at the appropriate temperature before being administered. This past week, about 140 workers in Lubakong and 60 in Kubanyane were vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine, which has been used exclusively in Lesotho. Due to limited supply of COVID-19 vaccines, the Lesotho government prioritized vaccinations for frontline healthcare workers and clinic staff as they work to acquire additional vaccines for the entire population. This is not the first vaccine delivery flight MAF has conducted. They transported several boxes of COVID-19 vaccines to three separate locations in Indonesia and carried medics to oversee local distribution. They expect that they will be involved in vaccine delivery in many of the 30-plus countries it operates within. MAF uses four Cessna TU-206Gs based in Missouri to deliver the vaccines. After these messages, EAA B-17 recovering after getting hit by a bird. Details after the break. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor Training Program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. EAA B-17 recovering from getting hit by a bird. EAA's Kermit Weeks Hangar Aircraft Technicians, B-17 Aluminum Overcast Tour Team, and the EAA Chapter 690 members showed EAA's can-do spirit over the last few days in getting their B-17 back in the air after a bird strike last Saturday cut short the 2021 tour very successful inaugural stop at Lawrenceville, Georgia. When the flight crew discovered the apparent bird strike after landing the aircraft following an uneventful flight experience, everyone got to work to fully inspect the aircraft's right wing between the engines. It was a team effort, said Dennis Dunbar, EAA's Director of Flight Operations. Chapter 690 offered tremendous assistance to both the tour personnel and the EAA headquarters staff who immediately traveled to Georgia to work on the aircraft. We also got great support from everyone on the airport, which allowed us to fully repair the minor damage to the wing and put the airplane back on tour. Current plans, weather permitting, are to complete maintenance flights in Georgia today, then proceed to Lake City, Florida for the next tour stop this weekend. In addition, Aluminum Overcast will return to Lawrenceville in June, 
11th until the 13th to fulfill the remaining flight experiences along with any new passengers booked prior to those dates. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.